Hello and welcome to the Pembrokeshire Bird Diary for 2022. I'm Annie Haycock from the Pembrokeshire Bird Group, here to run through a few of the birding highlights for January and February. Cattle egrets caused something of a buzz on New Year's Day and for the rest of the month. At least eight of them were seen regularly on fields near Pembroke River, sometimes at the Coit's Mill End and sometimes at Pennar. Not quite as many as last winter, but it is the fourth winter in a row that they've been here. They were often in the company of a dozen or so little egrets, so that, at a distance, it was impossible to get an accurate count. Other single cattle egrets turned up near St David's and at Lisefran Reservoir, and sometimes they were actually with cattle. Another species that has become a more regular visitor in recent years is the glossy ibis. Three dropped in at Angle on the 3rd, another one flew over Hook on the 8th, Two dropped into Castle Martin Court on the 14th, apparently commuting across to Dale and giving several sightings in both areas for the rest of the month. Castle Martin Court was, as usual, good for birds, such as marsh harriers, short-eared owls and a variety of wildfowl and waders. The crowd of black dots are some of the several thousand starlings roosting here, while the other two bigger black dots in the picture are the ibises arriving for that evening. Over the years we've amassed a lot of data from the Wetland Bird Survey. Winter 2021-22 was pretty consistent with the previous 10-year averages for the totals of most species. The exception in January was that there were double the usual number of shell duck. Still nowhere near the numbers seen in the 1980s and 90s though. Nowhere had high counts, just that they seemed to be in all sectors of the Clethi estuary especially. By the February count, all was back to the recent normal. The orange line on the graph shows the threshold for national importance. If a site is nationally important for a species, that means it regularly holds at least 1% of the estimated British population of that species. The decreasing threshold level indicates the species is declining everywhere, but as the Clethi accounts are now below that threshold for Sheldock, it suggests a greater decline here. The reasons for this are not known. While the monthly webs counts give a good idea of long-term changes for water bird species, they don't tell the whole story. For example, there was nothing unusual about the pintail counts this winter, but they missed the flock of up to 82 that were present in Angle Bay early in the year. The previous record was a total of 74 across the county for the January 2011 webs. These included 59 at Sprinkle Pill. Pintails just don't seem to like it this far west. While thousands are counted in the Berry Inlet and numbers occasionally reach into the hundreds in Carmarthen Bay, they often don't make double figures in Pembrokeshire as a whole. Small numbers of red-breasted Magansas spend their winter in St Bride's Bay or Carmarthen Bay, but sometimes one or two prefer more sheltered sites. This male showed off nicely at Fishguard Lower Town for a couple of weeks. This is another species that has declined drastically. However, the decline is seen across Europe and in the breeding population as well as in the numbers of wintering birds. Other wildfowl of note included two hooper swans on the Marlowe's Peninsula and another eight that were regularly seen on the St David's Peninsula, here at the Airfield Heaths. Hoopers are recorded every winter in the county, however they are frequently missed in the webs counts because they often spend the day feeding in fields away from the regular count sites. A ring-necked duck at Rosebush Reservoir stayed on into March. Three velvet scoters were seen off the coast at Broadhaven North. Both these species have been seen more frequently in recent years. Darrell Common can seem a bleak and inhospitable place in winter, but there are rewards for the hardier bird watchers amongst us. It is a great, if chilly, place to spend a late afternoon and dusk. Often a marsh harrier or two, up to three hen harriers, barn owl, short-eared owl, sparrowhawk, kestrel, buzzard, peregrine, woodcock and both common and jack snipe were seen on a number of occasions, though not usually all of them on the same day. Of course there were plenty of gulls around the county, including some scarce ones. Iceland gulls were seen at Lisefran, Asmusten, the Tyvee and this one at Newport. Two colouring black-headed gulls were reported. The one in Haverford West was from Essex, while the one at Lanstadwell was from near Warsaw in Poland. 
Both had been seen at the same places in Pembrokeshire in previous years. They do seem to be creatures of habit. On Pembroke Mill Pond, one of the resident adult mute swans was showing off her ring. We recorded another mute swan with a similar ring number in exactly the same spot in September 2020. They had both been ringed at Bentless, a short way downstream, as one-year-olds. Mute swans generally start breeding in their fall summer, if they can find a suitable territory. This one obviously had, as she had a mate and four youngsters from last year in tow. It was the first time she'd been reported since being ringed and hasn't moved far at all, which is also quite normal for the species. The other ringed bird may still be somewhere on the mill pond and worth looking out for. Amongst the smaller birds, it proved to be a bumper winter for Siberian chiffchaff in Wales, especially in our corner, with three in Carmarthenshire and at least seven in Pembrokeshire. Other small birds, such as firecrest, were also much in evidence. The end of January is the time for the RSPB's Big Garden Bird Watch. Over 36,000 people in Wales participated in 2021, but they don't break the numbers down by county. House Sparrow, Blue Tit and Starling were once again the top three birds here. Jays were recorded much more frequently than usual in the 2021 count, probably due to the failure of the acorn crop the previous autumn. Greenfinches showed a small increase, perhaps the start of the sign of a recovery from the devastating impact of the trichomonosis parasite. We can but hope. I don't know how many people take part in Pembrokeshire, but this year only one person mentioned it on the blog. David Ord counted 21 species in his garden, including this rather smart male brambling. While January had been milder and much drier than the long-term average, February was a mostly unsettled month with regular rainfall and some strong winds. Three named storms hit the UK shores between the 12th and the 23rd. One of these, Storm Eunice, brought winds gusting up to 90 miles an hour off St Anne's Head. Some places had twice the monthly average rainfall, but temperatures nearly two degrees above average made it the third warmest February since 1884. Sunshine was, however, definitely lacking, and some of the less common birds from January were still hanging around. Probably the most unexpected bird was a turtle dove that turned up in a garden, feeding alongside collared doves on the 24th. It's the fourth time this century we've had a midwinter record. A count of pied wagtails at the Withybush Roost one evening was enlivened by a merlin flushing out 150 or so birds already there. They swirled around and came back again a few minutes later and were joined gradually by another 350 or so. The merlin, so far as we could tell, went away empty-handed. Or should that be empty-footed? The Tyvee ringing group reported that their oldest recent retrap was a great spotted woodpecker ringed way back in December 2012 and previously retrapped in 2016 and 2020. The oldest known great spotted survived nearly 12 years after being ringed, so at 10 years this one is doing well. There was nothing unusual in the webs count this month, but we did find herons busy building nests and even incubating eggs at one of the heronries on the Clethi. This group of nine goosanders on the Nevin estuary may be two family groups. There were two green-headed males, though the other one isn't in this picture, and seven redheads. Females and juveniles look similar at a distance and are lumped together by the colour of their heads. Highest counts for this species are usually at Bosherston lily ponds, where a dozen or more can overwinter. They're scarce at the Nevin estuary, and when they are there, there's usually less than five. A single pochard was seen at two pools in the St David's area, neither of them known place for this species, which has become a rarity in the county. At least one pochard has been recorded by Webbs every winter except 2019-20. to However, such low numbers do not show on the scale of this graph. There were actually five in 2014-15. to Quite a change from the hundreds counted in the 1980s. This decline has been seen across Britain and is thought to be due in part to the generally milder winters allowing birds to stay further east and in part to a declining world population of the species. Inevitably, people have been reporting colouring birds. There was a spate of them in February, some birds that we've seen before, some that are new. 
Many of them were the locally ringed red shank oyster catchers and curlew. Please do keep reporting these as it builds up a picture of how long individuals stay in the area and also of their longevity. Somehow the overseas visitors seem a little more interesting. Mediterranean gull ZHT4 was ringed in the Czech Republic in 2019. It has now been seen six times at the GAN. Yellow AKKN was a new bird, ringed as an adult in the Elbe estuary in Germany in 2021. This is its first re-sighting. Common gull Orange 2H79 was ringed at the Ethan estuary in Scotland in 2016. The first re-sighting was at the GAN in February 2021. Another common gull, Red AXOA, was ringed on the island of Amrum in Germany in July 2021 and this was its first sighting since then. Well that's a quick reminder of January and February 2022. Thanks for watching and I hope you'll look out for the next edition.